Aloha and welcome to What's Bugging You, brought to you by Hawaii's leader in pest control and the first company in Hawaii to earn the National Quality Pro Certification, Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. Now, here's the host of our show, Mike Buck. Oh my, that's supposed to be sounding like fun. It's not fun. And it's called When the Ants Go Marching In. And we're going to talk about ants a little bit today on the program. Uh, welcome, uh, if you've been with us before, welcome back. If you're just finding what's bugging you, um, we're glad. Uh, Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions uh, here in Honolulu is uh, Hawaii's, by far, Hawaii's leader in pest solutions and control and prevention. This call, this show called What's Bugging You is brought to you by Sandwich Isles. You can find us at sandwichisle.com. And one of the people that uh, is, we're so happy to have is a recent addition to the administrative staff at Sandwich Isle. She is a, uh, a board-certified entomologist. We've talked a little bit in, in previous, and we're going to talk some more about the interesting securities route that brought her to Honolulu. Uh, she is uh, a PhD from Michigan State, and she is also on the faculty at the University of Hawaii. She does some research, and more importantly, she does a lot of training at Sandwich Isle. So if you're so lucky to get a job, you're going to learn from one of the best, and that is Dr. Marisol uh, Quintanilla. Good day. How are you? <laughs> Good. Thank you. Uh, you know, nice to see you again, you Mike. Know, yeah, and speaking of, since last time we uh, were, were together, uh, you've done even more traveling. Uh, this time you were off to uh, to Arizona. Um, it must be sort of interesting with, uh, with all the places you do. What was the reason for that trip? Why, why were you gone? Well, I was in the Copesan Conference. Um, it's a group of pest control professionals. Mm -hmm. um, we were meeting together, discussing new methods of pest control, new techniques, new products, etc. I do know there's a big concern in your industry about uh, chemicals and what kind of chemicals you can use, and there's all of this stuff. And, and some are saying, before you prevent something from being used, because it's, it's solving such a big problem, wouldn't you have to come up with something that was more acceptable to use in its place before you eliminate something? Oh, for sure. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's always the plan. Yeah. Okay, now, it's interesting because since our last show, we concentrated the last time, if you weren't with us, folks, we talked about dengue fever, about the Zika virus, we talked about uh, ornamental problems, and we didn't finish any of them. And, of course, we're going to circle back onto the uh, dengue and the Zika deal because, as you know, it's been in the news lately. Um, while, while Marisol, while you were on your trip, uh, we had an opportunity to spend some time with Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, and she's very concerned because part of the congressional district is the, is the neighbor islands, her, her th and of course, the dengue, and of course, the Zika. Um, and so it was instrumental that she helped the governor, or urged the governor to call a state of emergency. Now, before we make everybody scared, it's really not a, it's not really a big disaster yet, is it? No, no. So far, there's been 256 people um, that have gotten dengue, um, in in the big island mm -hmm. and Zika virus to the last time I checked there was no locally transmitted um, cases Not of Zika more. virus That's good news, isn't it? yes yeah, yeah. but it is a very big potential disaster mm -hmm. because we have all the right factors we have the vector we have the right kind of mosquitoes mm -hmm. of course we have mm -hmm. the people mm -hmm. we have the climate that is perfect for for the disease and for the mosquito and we have constant travel from from places mm. that do have a disaster right now. Okay, so I yeah, gotta, I, the one thing that I think would be important to throw in here is that it, it's it's I guess an evil coincidence that we're battling this this outbreak of dengue, which not at huge yet, but still 256 is still 256 sick yeah. people. And the reason why Dr. Quintanilla speaks of this because she's had dengue and we'll talk uh, yes. about that a little bit too she's had this uh, this horrible thing but i think what's interesting is people need to know that the mosquito that carries a dengue uh uh you know fever is also the same mosquito that can carry the zika virus yes it is exactly yeah. the same mosquito yeah. in fact zika virus and dengue virus are very similar mm -hmm. viruses so it's it's uh that's not good news because we have a lot of those mosquitoes here oh yes yeah. we have um, what is the difference, for people that don't know, the difference between dengue fever and Zika virus? Um, Zika virus is 
it's a lot milder infection. Mm -hmm. it, it most, like about 80% of people who get Zika don't even get any symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, and if you get symptoms, they're milder than dengue. Dengue is called breakbone fever. Yeah. You know, you yeah, feel like you know, your bones are breaking. You got to explain that because you had it. You got your bones broken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a tremendous pain in the joints mm. and, and, and um, in the bones. Also, you get very high fever. Um, mm -hmm. With Zika, also you get symptoms, but they're, they're milder. But like we talked about before, Zika comes with a twist. It is suspected to increase the chances of, um, of a baby being born with with birth defects, yeah. particular microcephaly and other birth defects, and also increases chances of uh, people getting Guillain-Barre, which is a neurodegenerative disease. Yeah, explain that. That that would be for an adult rather than a child. I, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it is suspected that people who have had dengue before, mm -hmm. who already, already ha have been exposed to dengue before, have a greater chance of getting complications with Zika. And mm -hmm. it is probably the same method, in the same reason why people who get a different type of dengue, because there's four types of dengue, so if you get a second type of dengue, uh, after you've gotten a first type mm -hmm. of dengue, you get a greater, a greater reaction. You can get hemorrhagic, the serious type of dengue, hemorrhagic dengue. That, that can be fatal. That yeah. it has about a 20% mortality wow. without treatment without yeah, but being you know, in here, here's what i think is important marisol that we make people understand a couple of things uh a lot of times they'll talk well you know they know a beekeeper and the beekeeper has been stung by bees so many times they're immune well not it, really it, it's it's yeah not really of course you, you you're saying that because you know what you're talking about but what i'm saying is that there's sometimes that you know you get like if you're a child and you get measles you're not going to get measles maybe later because your immune system is fighting it off. But from what we understand, it's the opposite in some of these other diseases. The more you get it, the worse it is. You don't, you, you don't build up an immunity. You build out an effective immunity to that first that type first of dengue type of, that you ah, got. Okay, okay. But the thing is that there's more than one type. Okay. There's more than, there's about, f there's four types, zero types of mm. dengue. So if you got type one, you are not immune to the other types. Okay. Um, instead, are you not likely to get type one again, though? You will not get type yes, one again, yeah. but you become. If you get another type, mm -hmm. you have like a extra reaction. You mm -hmm. know, you're it, instead of helping you, it it's worse yeah. for you. Well, Zika is so similar to dengue that it's suspected that it causes a similar response. So when a person who has had a history of dengue before then get Zika, the virus are able to multiply to much mm -hmm. higher numbers. So yeah. therefore, being able to build high numbers in the developing brain of, of a fetus and causing great damage or causing something like Guillain-Barre. So that's, of mm -hmm. course, that's a theory. It is not mm -hmm. proven, but it makes a lot of sense to me. You know, somebody said to me that it hurt our program in the past couple of programs ago, oh, you know, you talk about termites and roaches and, and rodents and all of these things. Why are you talking about mosquitoes so much? Well, obviously, because we have a, a condition here, but I didn't know until you told me on a, a last program uh, how deadly a mosquito is. I mean, in, in the world, it's like a big problem. It is the most hmm. dangerous animal in the planet. There's oh no goodness. animal that comes even close to a second. Mm -hmm. The closest second is humans, and we're about half as dangerous as mosquitoes. You know, humans with wars and yeah, yeah, yeah. murders. But mosquitoes kill about a million people a year. It's, it's a little bit less than a million. But in the past, it was much higher than a million mm -hmm. um, because there wasn't as good medicines um, for malaria, etc. But mosquitoes are the most, without any competition, mm -hmm. the most dangerous animal on the planet. You, you know what I think is interesting uh, in adjunct to that is to say that, look, okay, we know they're very, very dangerous. Um, they're almost impossible to get rid of because they're everywhere. Yeah. But, you know, the interesting dichotomy to me is that there's medicine that they're developing and there's also pesticides that are developing it doesn't seem like we're on the same page it it's we don't we still have to worry about eradication in certain areas where they're uh you know overbreeding 
that it becomes more likely to be a problem. Of course. So we have to be able to eradicate it. Okay, mosquito control is the, the number one steps we yeah. can take. Yeah. There is medicine for malaria. There is, however, no medicine for Zika yeah. and for dengue. And for uh, many, many mosquito-related diseases do not have any medicine, especially viral diseases. So mosquito control is the number one step that can be taken. Okay, you, you have to remember this. It's sandwichisle.com or 456 456- Seven seven one six, and I'll give that to you again later, so that you can call them up and talk to folks there. Because I do know that Marisol a lot what, what you do, and Michael Botha has really forged the way in your industry to talk about prevention rather than fixing something. In other That's words, right. to look around a piece of property, what your people are trained to do is they're there to say do my centricon, but they're also going to say, oh, by the way, Mike, we just found this over here, and we're going to treat this, but you need to keep an eye on this and call us if it gets worse. Or let us know if, it, if the treatment's not working or it's working well. For sure. Yeah. We believe in integrated pest management mm-hmm. and, and, and using different methods to control the pest. And one of the number one methods is prevention. Yeah. In the case of mosquitoes, not keeping um, stagnant water around your house and buckets and tires, mm-hmm. etc. is one of the number one steps you can take. And that costs you no money. Now, are people getting a wise to that? I mean, that's always been a... a, a a old wives, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. But now that we know about Zika and we know about dengue, are people saying, hey, you know, come out here. I want you to look and see what, what can I do to make sure my property is, is going to be protected. Yes, we're getting more calls mm. for mosquito control. Yeah. Um, now, is, and, and when you say you do that, I, I, you've got some great TV commercials that I was talking about the other day on our regular show and also on our Fix It Friday show where we have your commercials playing. Your people, there's any number of things that they bring to the party. When they come out to do a management at, at some at an account's place, there there is ways to treat that. What is the best way to treat, your, say, your gardens for mosquitoes, assuming that you're getting rid of the stagnant water, but you still seem to have a problem? Well, one of the best ways is using, um, if, if you do not have any stagnant water anymore, mm-hmm. um, it's using an adulticide, using um, an insecticide that kills, kills the adults, the adults right. and that is um, sprayed onto plants um, and the mosquitoes rest on plants, mm-hmm. male mosquitoes also feed on plants, um, solely nectar, sap, etc. So uh, we spray and kills the adults. Also we spray along with an in- insect growth regulator um, this insect ro- growth regulator prevents the adults from l- um, the females from laying from eggs, laying, eggs, w- yeah. laying yeah. eggs that are viable. Mm-hmm. And also in the water, when it falls in the water, it also prevents immature mosquitoes to develop to adults. So it kind of stops the cycle. Yeah. You, uh, don't people, most people have to be kind of patient that it's not a quick fix that you're, you, you, you have to really manage this. You have to come yeah. in on, and observe what's going on, get rid of the water, get rid of the adults, and then keep an eye out because somewhere all around the place there's larvae, there's going to be little babies somewhere. Yeah. Well, right after the treatment, the, mm. the, f- the, the, the fix is pretty quick. When mm. we do an adult decide, it kills the adults there. And if we put the insect re- growth regulator out of that water, let's say if you have a water lily mm. pond, et cetera, there will be the amount of mosquitoes coming out of that water would be much lower, so you will get an immediate fix. The only thing is that uh, mosquitoes might be coming from your neighbor's yard or yeah. from some areas that are not treated. That's why the, um, continual treatment, it's important to um, to get yeah, and monthly I'm guessing control folks, or what, bi-monthly. What, if you're smart enough to be like me, uh, you, those of you know this, for many, many years, our home has been protected with the Centricon uh, baiting system to keep an eye on the termites. But now that we've become more and more aware of this, but I think the good news is that mosquitoes don't live as long as termites. I mean, you know, no. there, there's, there's a, a, termites eat, you know, a couple of pounds of wood a day out of your home. Uh, the mosquitoes, if you start working on the eradication of them, uh, I, I don't know the numbers anywhere like you do, but you can let people know that you can be rest assured that if you are able to control, that they don't live very long. So you pretty no, you they get just rid live. They, they they have a very short lifespan. Mm-hmm. You know, a month would be. Yeah, an that's average. an old mosquito, right? That's an month. that's already <laughs> an old mosquito. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about their breeding? I mean, it, 
you know, does anything multiply faster? Doesn't it seem to be very, very quick that they multiply? Oh, very fast. Mm -hmm. In just in just a, in just a few days, it can go from an egg to 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 an adult. Yeah. It's 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 very fast. Of course, uh, all that all this depends on the species, the exact date, number of days, but very very fast. You know, people have told me since they've been listening to the program that they they got so excited because they went home and they all found standing water somewhere. Yes, Pretty and in that in right? that standing yeah, water, yeah, yeah. most of the time, every mm. time I check standing water, there's some mosquito larva there. Yeah, Mos now is is it enough just to pour it out? Yes, it is enough to pour it out, but you also need to prevent it from from standing regathering, there right. again, mm -hmm. regathering. So many times, cleaning up, getting rid of those containers, putting yeah. tires, etc., in a, in a garage or place where it's roof where it doesn't get rained on. Um, Treating, treating, it's things that you can't remove. There's yeah. sometimes you have a water lily pond or something, something that you yeah. just want to keep I, I there. You, then you get to treat it. I, I don't want to get you uh, uh, or Michael both mad at me because I do know that Michael, a long time ago, he loved, like me, he loved bromeliads and he had a lot of them out in Kanye. Uh, I love them. I think they look beautiful. Yeah, but. But they do breed mosquitoes. They breed, now, however, uh, let me tell you something. I have a hint. Those of you that have gardens with these large, we have these big bronze, these big beautiful big bromeliads uh you do not need to plant them in the ground if they root in the ground they're a lot harder to manage for mosquitoes than if you have them just standing in a brick or someplace because they don't need to go inside the ground they can live just perfectly out of the you know in a bucket or someplace now and that means that they're easy to water and and, and empty the water hose them out clean them out and then fill them put new water in it again where there's no mosquitoes but in, in actual fact, I think I'm kidding myself because the more you have of them, the more likely you are to be raising mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, it's like many little water ponds. In mm. fact, mos um, bromeliads and mosquitoes have a special relationship. Mm -hmm. Bromeliads benefits from mosquitoes because, you know, all that bacteria, you know, the 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 eggs you know sure. all that organic matter um that's, that's serves like fertilizer, as fertilizer right? yeah, yeah. that's right and it attracts other you know there's there's a whole ecosystem that mm -hmm. goes on inside that bromeliad little pond yeah yeah so and of course it benefits the mosquito but we do have products that you can apply to your plants mm -hmm. including your bromeliads that could solve that could solve the problem um, From what I understand, and you can you can give me the scientific reason why, if you have standing water and you must have it, like for instance, we have lily, we have some lily ponds, okay, and and I mean they're just some big huge pots with ornamentals in them, which we're going to talk about a little later on in the program, uh, and and when we have fish in there, and the fish seem to do very well as to control mosquitoes, but there's also, from what I understand, and you can explain why this works. Some things that you can apply that actually will put a film or something on top of the water to make it difficult for the babies to get out. How does that? Wh why does that work? Or what do, does it work? Um, yeah. Well, for uh, in sandwich house, what we use is an insect re growth regulator that prevents them from growing to be an adult. But mm -hmm. there's also some products that you can put as a film on the water, mm -hmm. and that also prevents them from surviving because mosquito larvae breathe in the water. They have something like, um, um, how do you call this? It's like a pipe that they're breathing through through their back end. Mm -hmm. And this back end sticks out of the water and in their mouth, it's submerged in the water and they're feeding on bacteria mm -hmm, and sure. other water stuff. So if you put a film it can't of, get out. They can't yeah. breathe. They mm -hmm. can't breathe because they keep this tube that out of snorkel, the water. Right? Snorkeling it's, it's little, tube. That's the yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, looking yeah, for yeah, the word yeah, snorkeling. Snorkel. But yeah, yeah, the little snorkel, but yeah, I couldn't think of the that's word. That's the first thing I thought of. Wow, that sounds like a snorkel. snorkel. Yeah. Yes, yes, I couldn't think of the word. So um, so if, if, you, if an oil or many times even a soap will break the surface yeah. tension and make them drown, not prevent them to be able to breathe. In okay, there. when we come back after a short little uh, message from Sandwich Isles, we're going to get to uh, sort of the second part of our program today. We started a little while ago on this before, and we're talking about ornamentals. And you'll find out what ornamentals are. And, you know, like the word suggests, these are things of beauty that we look at, but they also have little problems associated with it. We'll get into some of them as we continue here on It's 
What's bugging you? At Sandwich Isle, we believe the best way to protect your home from unwanted pests is not through control, but through prevention. Pest prevention is a unique concept perfected by Sandwich Isle in 1997. Over the years, we have continued to improve our service effectiveness with the many technological advances in our industry. Today, Sandwich Isle's pest prevention is recognized as one of the most environmentally responsible and effective approaches in the industry. Expect more and get it with Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. There's a good chance that your house may be the single largest investment that you ever make. It's also your home. It's where you and your family spend a lot of time. It's more than just a place. There are many types of homes, but for our purposes today, there are really only two types of homes, those that have termites and those that will eventually get termites. That's because there's no such thing as a termite-proof home. Call Sandwich Isle today and schedule your free inspection. Oh yeah, it's called, that's the chicken dance. And we'll talk about that too. Because just like, just like, just like what we're talking about today with the with the mosquitoes and the termites and everything else, there's a lot of other things that Sandwich Isle works on. And they work from the little tiniest things like bed bugs all the way up to feral pigs. And that's why it must be fun for uh, Dr. Marisol uh, Quintanilla to, to go to work every day because I guess you, you never know at Sandwich Island when the phone rings what kind of a problem people are going to have, right? No. That makes it a lot of fun. Yes, a lot but, of fun. You know, the thing that we started to talk about before is I think that there's so many nice places where people are going to go to a party, so they're going to bring a plant, they're going to bring a flower, they're going to bring an orchid, they're going to bring something. Or it, they just plant their yard so that they can be amused with looking at things. These are called ornamentals. Um, is that a, a special category or class of, of pests as well? Um, yes, of course. There's some, there's some pests mm. um, that feed on your beautiful plants, sure. on your flowers, on your shrubs, on your bushes, etc., um, the reason the, I ask that is because, like right now, um, I just uh, gave uh, Marisol the fruits of our labor. We have uh, my wife and I have some apple. I mean, some ice cream bananas. And I know if you thank leave you, them, they look beautiful. Yeah, they're 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 not ready to eat yet, but your kids are going to love them. Um, I, I want to tell you though that when you do that, you have to be aware of okay, if you're going to grow this kind of a tree or plant, it has some some problems because rats love bananas. Oh, yes. And, you know, and so if you don't get them out of the tree quick enough, the rats are going to get them. And, and therefore, if there's a food source, they're going to tell all the rest of the rats in the neighborhood, come over here to Mike's yard and get some bananas. So that's the price you pay to have fruit. But ornamentals, you don't think would come with that. But from what we understand, we'll talk about some of these things. There are a whole host of bad things that can be in, in your beautiful flowers. Of course, of course. And by the way, the, what you mentioned about mm -hmm. the rats, mm -hmm. rodents eat about 20% of the world's food. Wow. So you're not the only one. Yeah, yeah. The whole world is battling rodents and eating their fruits, vegetables, grains, etc. They eat right through a plastic dog container to get at the dog food. It's unbelievable. What oh, they can their do, teeth are pretty yeah. much as strong as a steel knife. You, you know, though, I'm I'm worried that people that might be listening to our show are are embarrassed to call because they think that it's something that they did. I mean, it, let's face it. We live in the tropics. We're going to have rodents. There's going to be rats and all kinds of things. For uh, sure. But and and we'll talk about that too as as we continue. But let's talk a little bit about some of these things, ornamentals, and why, if you don't treat them, it, not only will it ruin your things, but it, it'll, it'll, it'll jump onto other things. What, what are some of the things, when you talk about ornamentals, what are sort of the, some of the problems that the ornamentals have? Well, here in Hawaii, there's a lot of problems with mealybugs, mm -hmm. um, scales, and whitefly. Okay. The plants can get covered with these pests. Mm -hmm. um, white fly, particularly. Yeah, white it. fly, yeah, pl yeah, particularly. Yeah. Um, plumerias, they, mm. they, they will be the bottom of the leaf will be covered with white flies. Mm -hmm. Those are little tiny white insects that you kind of touch them and they fly. You know, yeah, it looks like powder, but it's actually powder. living, right? That, but yeah. Yes, 
they are, are they alive. Outside of, outside of what they do to the visual and the viability of the plant, are they are they harmful to humans? I mean, white fly, do they cause any any problems, or any diseases, or are they just a pest? Well, they're definitely not harmful to humans mm-hmm. in the sense that they cause diseases. Mm-hmm. They are harmful to humans because they um, they cause huge loss in agricultural products oh, and okay. ornamental yeah. products. They, like mosquitoes, they also transmit viruses, but yeah. not to humans, okay. to plants. They vector several um, plant viruses and other diseases that um, that can have devastating effects on on. On growers, yeah, on it can farmers. be so. Uh, and not only that, but even uh, even those of you that have these beautiful ornamentals at home, you know, all of a sudden you have a nice looking plant, and then you come home and there's all kinds of holes in the leaves. You think, what did I do wrong? You know, well, it's something you you didn't do right. You didn't look for these things and inspect them and treat them before it become too late. Yeah, that these pests are all over the yeah. island, mm-hmm. so they. They will they will come to the plant. They will find you. They will find your plant, and even if you treat it, um, they will come back because the yeah. populations are so high all around you. And these islands have higher populations of these pests than than in other places because we do not have many native biocontrol agents. Yeah, interestingly enough, and I guess some sometimes the climate has a lot to do with it because we have a perfect breeding ground. Uh, all year long. And I oh, guess yes. In some places, you know, if you don't have any greens, there's no bugs because there's nothing for them to live on. You know, <laughs> you get places on the mainland, they're covered with snow for months, they have no grass. Yeah, right. that's a, that's, it's almost like fumigation, right? Yeah. Kills everything. <laughs> Natural fumigation. Um, okay, let's let's talk about a couple of these things. Uh, the difference between, say, a white fly and a scale. What are, what are scales generally? Um, scales are similar to white fly. Mm-hmm. They're an insect um, that, st- by the way, white fly are not flies. Mm-hmm. They belong to the order Homoptera. Okay. They're more related to something like stink bugs and yeah. Do they cicadas. fly or they just get, the, does the wind make them fly? Oh, some part, I mean, the, the insect, the, the males fly, mm-hmm. and etc. But the, the, the females um, generally don't fly. They're they they stick to the plant mm-hmm. and in the scales is the same thing scales and white fly mealybugs they all are similar they're very related they mm-hmm. act this in a very similar way for scales the female becomes permanently attached to the plant all right. her mouth part um, goes inside the plant feeds on the plant sap and she never moves again. Okay, mm. she just sticks in one spot. Outside of her body, a scale is formed. Yeah, okay, that's made of like that, that's waxy material, mm-hmm. and it looks like a bump or a mm-hmm. crust. Mm-hmm. You know, similar like when you get a wound and you get a scale, okay, a, you know, a scab. Yeah. It looks like a scab. Mm-hmm. Um, Sometimes they can be white, yellow. You know, they can be different shapes depending on the species. Is that where the babies are coming from inside that little scab? Well, the the mm-hmm. the females. Uh, will produce many eggs mm-hmm. and the, and and the the babies will come out many times crawl out and if you know of course if the babies is a female they'll find a permanent permanent place to start feeding yep. and and pretty soon bye bye to the plant huh? <laughs> they yeah. they can they can develop huge populations mm-hmm. um they can feed on the uh, take a lot of energy from the plant they also reduce the ability of the plant to do photosynthesis because as they feed both um, mealybugs scales and white fly and aphids do the mm. same thing as they feed they produce a product called honeydew which is mm. their waste it is just sugar water because okay. the plant has too much water and too much sugar you just learned something folks that's how honeydew melon got its name <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honey. Yeah, so I don't know, yeah. but um, sounds good to me though. That yeah. sugar and water, right? <laughs> so it, it is too. The plant has too much sugar and water for mm. in, in in comparison to the amount of protein and minerals that the insect needs. So it keeps the protein and minerals and throws out the sugar and water. That sugar and water falls on top of the leaves, mm-hmm. and there's a black mold yeah, that makes, grows. It looks so awful, doesn't it? it, look, yeah. it this yeah. black mold grows, mm-hmm. and, and this black mold, it's not the problem. Mm-hmm. The, what's the problem is such those 
dos millibugs, dos mm. scales, um, those aphids, uh, those white fly, yeah. they're causing the problem. And also the ants are feeding on this honeydew. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're going to talk about ants Yeah, later. And yeah, and that's going to be in just a minute. But one of the other things I want to make sure people understand is that while, uh, while some of this is just, strain, just plain ugly on your ornamentals, when you talk about the mold, there are everybody's, there's all kinds of molds that you guys deal with and, and, and others deal with. I mean, there's companies now that are just dedicated to mold. Is that mold a harmful mold, or is it just harmful to the plant? Well, it is harmful to the plant mm -hmm. because as it covers the plant, it covers the leaves, it prevents the plant from doing photosynthesis. Sure. Besides, it looks really ugly. Yeah, it's awful. It I is have a Tahitian gardenia that's got that in it, and you think, oh, poor plant. Yeah, and, yeah. and it, 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 it kind of takes away mm -hmm. even the point to have an ornamental plant. Yeah. It is no longer in, no longer a beautifying agent in mm -hmm. your garden. Um so the solution for that black, that powder, yep, that, that, yep. That, that black mold, the mildew on top of the plant, the solution is to get rid of the aphids, the white fly, the scale. Mm -hmm. That is the solution. Can, and, a, can a plant recover from that, from that mold? Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's something that can be yeah. washed off. And okay. once you get rid of the, the aphids, the white fly, mm -hmm. the scale, once you get rid of it, the mold will go away. Okay, before we move into speaking about these little, these little civilized communities of ants, uh, let's take a look at, so we talked a little bit about white fly and scales and mealybugs and now this mold. Um, and I know they all are different, but they are so similar. Is the eradication of the treatment for them pretty much similar? In yes. other words, the chemicals you might use or whatever. Yes, the, 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 the three of them are treated very similar. They are very difficult to control. Mm -hmm. They are very difficult to control because they cover themselves with these waxy materials. Okay. Um, many times the scale, the scale, the, the scale yeah, for yeah. example, it's covered with this waxy material. The whole body is like a tank. It's attached to the leaf, mm -hmm. so it's sealed. It's feeding underneath the leaf. The, the back part is totally covered in wax. So when you spray it with something, mm -hmm. it doesn't affect it because the wax is... Um, yeah, hydrophobic it's, yeah, yeah. it's hydrophobic mm. so the water doesn't stick to it the pesticide mm. doesn't stick to it so it, it, it doesn't get affected the eggs also are covered with this waxy material that protects them so very difficult to control the crawlers the new ones that come out they're the, the most susceptible ones right. um, to control but there are solutions mm. um you Water. have to be very patient, though, right? I mean, if you're dealing with white fly, you know, they, they, they tell you, well, you got if they're on the bottom of the leaf. They are on the, the bottom of the leaf. You clean the bottom of the leaf, you know? Well, you have to spray from yeah. the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Um, just application of water with soap will mm. help mm -hmm. because the soap, like a dishwashing soap or something, breaks down that waxy, um, just like it breaks down that oil in your dishes yeah. will also break down because wax is oil it's a fat yeah so it also breaks down that waxy compound so adding a surfactant something to break down that that wax is very important in in success okay and i i want to give you a little plug uh, to our friends at dawn uh dishwashing soap because of the great things that were done up in alaska after the uh, oil spill and whatnot getting the oil off the uh seabirds and whatnot this dawn is pretty i guess a little bit more environmentally friendly than something. Also, from what I understand, Simple Green is pretty environmentally responsible so that you, you shouldn't feel bad about using these things to control your ornamental pests. Oh, yes. And and at, at Sandwich House, we don't leave it alone and mm. just water and soap. There's other compounds that can yeah. be used. There's also s products that are systemic. They are put on the plant and the and the insecticide goes inside the plant so oh, as the okay. insect feeds it um the insecticide becomes part of the plant so it will die and that's one of the most effective solutions there are um and there's there's other solutions that will mm. repel pests like um there's um neem neem oil and other things and so we have it we have a system in which we rotate these products and, and we you know, are trying to achieve the best control but this mm. is one this is a cha a challenge not only for us it is a challenge worldwide yeah, for the entire industry that's why we're so excited uh, to bring you the program and 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 simply put 
Sandwich Isle goes out of their way to find these solutions. And their people, and we're going to tell you a little bit in the next segment how you might even be able to get a, a nice job at Sandwich Isle one of these days, and, and Marisol can help you learn. But their people get the biggest kick out of being able to solve your problem. That's why they go to work every day, and that's why they love their jobs. And we've got to come back. We're going to th- speak about these pesty little ants. But right now, we're also talking about termites and protection from them. Why do you need termite protection? My home is very important to me. Your home is your castle. My home is everything to me. Our customers want to protect their investment. That's why they hire Sandwich Isle to protect their home from termites. There are some homes out there that are going to get termites. You can spend thousands and thousands of dollars to repair damage. You need to protect your house, and Sandwich Isle protects ours. That's Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. Expect more and get it. Why choose Sandwich Isle's pest prevention over pest control? The last thing I want to worry about are bugs and centipedes around my wife and kids. At Sandwich Isle, we believe in pest prevention, not pest control. The bottom line is we want to prevent these pests from getting into your house in the first place. We look at things like caulking and sealing gaps, holes and cracks around your house. We do a lot of things that are different, that don't involve any pesticides whatsoever. I love Sandwich Isle. That's Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. Expect more and get it. Yep, you know, when Sandwich Isles comes out to the property like they do my property, it's like having an army. These guys, they're, these technicians are so well trained and more importantly, so well prepared to, to have everything in their truck. And I do know that uh, that's one of the things Marisol and Dr. Marisol Quintanilla uh, is the board certified entomologist. She is uh, hosting the program with me today. And she is also in charge of training uh, for all of these people. And there's gr- a great job in that. And isn't it sort of true that that, you know, that when your truck rolls out there, it's got just about anything that can come up and, 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 and be there for it. So let's talk about how that applies to ants because they're tiny little things. First of all, what's the problem? And second of all, how do we fix it? Yeah, um, we're ants. Ants are very associated with these ornamental pests that we were mm-hmm. talking before. They have actually a social relationship. They ha- mm-hmm. they the ants depend on white fly, mealybugs, mm-hmm. aphids, scale, because these these insects produce these honeydew we were talking yeah, about. So they can go the get ants up, feed right. them, feed on that. Um, they feed on that. In exchange, the ant provides these insects protection. Yeah. When a biocontrol agent, like a little tiny my, um, parasitoid wasp comes, or a ladybug or something comes to eat these pests, these white flies, the ants go fight for them. Yeah, yeah. When it's bad weather, they will take them and put them in their nest, protect them, etc. So they... The, these guys are allies. You know, I, I think what's fascinating is not just your passion, Marisol, for what you do, but, you know, as we're learning, ants, although they're a huge, obnoxious pain and they're, there's all kinds of things that you could go wrong with them, um, they're pretty organized. I mean, you talk about the society, it sounds like there's a whole lot of things going on in our gardens and our homes that we know nothing about. There's like families and, and there's, there's stores. There's, and there's kingdoms. There's kingdoms, yeah, really. Ants have kingdoms. Yeah. They have a queen, mm-hmm. and this, they have soldiers, um, they have workers, um, they have larvae, you know, the yeah. ants in development, and of course the workers need to feed the larvae and take care of them. They have a whole organized kingdom, right? go- very and you're not, structured. And you're not allowed to be lazy. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no. Everybody does their job. Yeah. You know, do you find it fascinating as, a, a, you know, a Ph.D. in this and master in this area, the amount of study that's gone on for so many centuries about these things? And, I mean, how much more we know now than what we used to do about the society and all of this kind of stuff? Uh, it doesn't look like any of them are going away. We just have to figure out a way to live with them and, de- and control them. Well... Um, we do need to control them. Um, ants are a serious problem. They're one of the number one reasons for species extinction. Mm-hmm. Ants are are one of our number one pest complaints. Many, yeah. most of our calls now are because of ants. Yeah, and you know, it's, Hawaii it, had no ants. Yeah, before. I was going to say, you know, Hawaii. 
was not a natural breeding ground for ants. They, it were didn't, ha they didn't have ants. Exactly. All ants are introduced. Mm -hmm. To the best of my knowledge, yeah. all ants here are introduced. They're all invasive. And they have produced a huge amount of problems. Mm -hmm. Like the little fire ant. That I was going to say, now we're becoming aware of this fire ant. This is a big problem, isn't it? Because they, can be, they can be harmful. Oh, the little fire ant mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. mess up your life. Yeah. Besides um, causing a huge amount of species extinction, they produce a huge amount of crop losses because we were talking about they help the mealybugs, they help mm -hmm. the aphids, they help the white fly. Think and about people who have produce. a farm. Yeah. The, the amount of production will significantly be reduced because of these serious pests, and these little fire ants on top will bite the workers. They fall off the trees mm -hmm. and bite you, and they make animals blind. They bite the cornea of cats and mm -hmm. dogs, of other animals, and they can go blind. Even they cattle, can, I understand, get, get suffer from these. Oh, know? yes. They can, I mean, if you leave a baby out there, they can mm -hmm. make your baby. Yeah. They, I'm so, they can make your baby go blind, probably. I, I think one of the big problems here is that when you, let's say that you get an area that gets infested by this, this fire ant, and you got workers that don't want to work there anymore. They're not oh, going to go to work every day. No, that's stung. You know, who wants to go to work and get they that? Fly, they yeah, fall yeah, off yeah, the yeah, trees yeah, for, yeah. from you and, yeah. Uh, uh, what, what are there, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of natural enemies. I know that no. there are ant eaters. There are some things that eat ants. But well, mostly, we don't have ant eaters but mostly here. mostly the ants eat somebody else. So what stops them from growing and growing and growing? They're Nothing. Yeah. The only thing that can stop them mm -hmm. is pest control. What's the sandwich aisle pest solution solution to ants? What are some of the things that work on management rather than prevention of management and, and, and prevention? Food well, supply? Um, Yes, for sure. But once you have a situation with uh, a, a situation mm -hmm. like this, like the little fire ants, they can be feeding on the honeydew of aphids and mealybugs outside. So if you have this problem, you have to contact a uh, professional. Mm -hmm. You need to contact also um, a entomologist from University of Hawaii or somebody in charge of this to help yeah. to help with this situation. And you need to do pest control, you know, the, like a sandwich owl, put baits. Baits, and these baits are mostly food, very attractive to ants, but have a little bit of poison. Mm -hmm. And since ants are social, what they will do is share the poison with the whole colony. Once you they get share that with out. the queen, yeah, yeah, yeah. they share with the larva, they mm -hmm. share with the workers, they share with the, the soldiers, and you have a whole colony dead so we, killing we, one is nothing yeah you yeah. have to kill the whole colony yeah and by the way uh we we've talked before when michael both was here one time before uh, marisol we talked about you know when you have vegetation touching your house if you have plants that are too close to your house that that's a bridge that you know a tree that's got a lot of ants in it the ants can go on the tree into your house into your kitchen and then you got an ant problem inside for sure, it's mm. a bridge. Yeah. You're providing yeah. them a way to get to your house, and that bridge can be useful to ants, mm. to all kinds of other insects, and to rodents too. Yeah. So you're providing uh, an easy access That's to your house. That's the prevention part we talk about, right? Yeah. Clip the trees back. That's know? right. You yeah. need to have no plants touching your house. What about what about uh, the caution? You, you talked about baits before. I do know that there's a lot of families that listen to the program that have kids and pets. I do know that you have to be very careful about what, sort of things you put out there um are there baits ant baits that are safe that that other things would not be interested in oh ant baits are generally very safe mm -hmm. the ones we use are very safe in fact most of the pesticides insecticides that we use are very safe they're very effective against insects but have very low mammalian toxicity low mm -hmm. low toxicity mammals, to mammals yeah. um these baits are fed upon by ants and kill ants, um, but will not will not um, produce significant harm to. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're not supposed to be ingested. Yeah, um, of course. Um, but we do <laughs> apply we do yeah. apply them to areas where um, children and pets have will a, yeah. not likely you know, reach I, I, them. I want to tell you this is also true with us. We have a couple of dogs that mostly are inside, but they're outside. And whenever we have the monthly by appointment, uh, monthly visit from Sandwich Isle, that we bring the boys in, and and it, you know after a couple of hours, that's fine. They can that's go fine. back outside. They can again. go back out. So this is something I, I think people need to know, Marisol, that 
not just to the opportunity for getting a good job at Sandwich Isle, but you folks, you particularly and others in the scientific community that Sandwich Isle deals with, uh, are constantly looking for something that will do the job better and safer. And That's this right. Is, isn't, that, isn't that a growing area in pest control that has got a lot of opportunities for people that want to invent new products? Yes, there's constant invention of new products. And there's constant improvement of, of, of current products. We always want to get greater pest control, more effective pest control with least danger to, to humans and pests. And this is being achieved. Pest control, it's improving. It has yeah. improved, um, improved significantly from the past. You know, Sandwich Isle was the first in, in Hawaii to be n- recognized for a number of things. And I know that as a certified, you know, board certified entomologist, you too can blow the horn a little bit because there are differences between some of the companies out there. I mean, there's some com- competitors I know of Sandwich Isle that are quite capable and, and good at what they do. But the overall approach means that you must always have certain opportunities that people can come down and, 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 and file an application or look through, you know, your website. Go to sandwichisle.com and see what's going up there. What sort of, uh, and, and maybe just somebody that knows nothing but knows that it's a good field to go in. How do you teach somebody to become a pest control specialist? Well, we have um, the first few days after they get hired, they go through several trainings. Um, they watch videos, read books, and then they're quizzed and tested. Mm-hmm. And also we have um, field training. They go with experienced technicians. Mm-hmm. They One day they go with me in which I go yeah, in the yeah. field and observe them and teach them. They go with man- They go in the field with managers. And we have... Three times a week, we have Pest of the Week talk in which yeah, I give yeah. them a, a talk. Like it feels like, like college, and then yeah, I have yeah, a quiz yeah, at yeah, the yeah. end. You're going to be tested. I'm going to start mailing you, emailing you folks all out there, test so you can take a test and see what you can learn from ours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So they, they get trained through through several through several ways and through um, several people. They also get certification, Department of Agriculture um pesticide applicators mm-hmm. license mm-hmm. um and they need certifications on different fronts yeah different I, types I, what i think it's important is the opportunity uh, we talk about this is something that you know michael both of stress stresses there's two types of homes in hawaii those with termites and those that are going to get them so i mean it is it, an ongoing opportunity to get on top of this the more we build the more we grow the more opportunity there will be into pest control and management for sure. Yeah, that's great. Now, I want to make sure, though, that somebody that we, we, we have a little mailbag section. And if you want to write in uh, to Sandwich Isle, you can go online or you can drop me a line here at the Mike Buck Show at gmail.com just so long as we get it. And since we talked earlier, you know, as we start getting ready to wrap up in a little while, I want to make sure that people understand. Um, we talked about when you had uh, dengue and, and I asked you at that time how, ser- how similar dengue was to malaria and there are people that want to know here is, are there malaria mosquitoes in Hawaii? We talked about dengue. We talked about Zika. What about malaria? Um, Anopheles mosquito, which is the uh, mosquito that transmits malaria, has been reported in Hawaii. It probably been introduced. They travel, right? They come off somebody's... No, they pro- uh, yeah, somebody's stuff. Who mm. knows? Uh, plant or mm. egg somehow. Or got, could have gotten in a plane and then got yeah. off the plane. But they have not survived in Hawaii there's there's pop they have not been collected afterwards so mm-hmm. that means they're not established in Hawaii so there's the chances of Hawaii getting a malaria epidemic or getting malaria problems are at this moment yeah. close to zero I think what's fascinating though is I mean you know we talked we're, we're still going to finish up for a couple of minutes you're talking about ants a little bit more how many different kinds of ants there are? I mean, you know, you see big ants and little ants and fire ants and whatnot. The, the the one that seems to be the big problem in most people's homes are these little tiny black ones. Yeah. And 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 are, how many different? I mean, I know that you know there's probably a specific number, but there must be like mosquitoes and like bees and like lots of kinds of ants as well. Yes, and, there's there's thousands and thousands and thousands of type of ants. In Hawaii, there's fifty plus. Not mm-hmm. sure exactly how many, but more than fifty, and they're all introduced. They're, they're yeah, see, none of them are native from Hawaii. 
Yeah. And and many many of these ants that are in people's house are ants that that actually have multiple queens. Mo- um, instead of having one kingdom, it's like multiple kingdoms mm-hmm. united, which makes it very hard to control. What should one do if they're in their backyard or they, maybe they live up against a mountain and they come upon this mound and they see these this big thing of ants? I mean, just kicking it around with your feet is not going to change much, is it? What do you do? Oh, the best thing is to... Um, call a sandwich put, out. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. call a sandwich Four, five, out. Six, seven, seven, one, six, quick. But, I mean, it, it's it's isn't that the key? If you can find that place that you can do something about the entire colony? Oh, fantastic, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and once again, I mean, uh, I saw one time, one of your, but this is something very interesting. Without naming specific names, we've had a couple of guys over the years at Sandwich Isle that come to our place. And I'm, I'm sure you hear this from other customers and other friends that actually you people know more about my yard than I do. I mean, when, when a professional walks around, you can see things that a, a regular homeowner cannot see. Of course, of course. I <laughs> since uh, since a child, I've always been interested in in plants and mm-hmm. insects, etc. And my mother always used to tell me, "What can you see?" I was, you know, looking at a plant and looking mm-hmm. at the insects and looking at the things. And she, I can see nothing. What are you seeing? Mm-hmm. So when you are trained, when you know what you're looking for, you can see what other people cannot see, and you can interpret what these things mean. When you yeah. know the relationship between one insect and another, you can design better control methods. You can choose sure. the right product once you know who your enemy is mm-hmm. and how your enemy behaves. What it's I like strategic out, war. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like a, a war, a strategy, a war of uh, uh, who can outlive who. But what, what I think is fascinating is, that those of you that don't know, uh, the delightful accent that Marisol Quintanilla has is, uh, she's from Chile. Um, and certain a lot of similarities, certain a lot of differences, but isn't it sort of interesting that once you know how to do what you do, that you can be involved and valuable anywhere? In other words, if somebody comes and gets a job at Sandwich Isle, and next year they're going to move to Maine or New Hampshire, they can they can adapt to those pests just as easily. Yes, yeah. the skills are transferable. Mm-hmm. And um, roaches are... Are everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Um, ants are a problem. You said the magic everywhere. Word. We haven't even started talking about roaches yet. Yeah, but we'll one day, maybe, maybe we'll next next that. time, yeah, next yeah. next program, let's yeah, talk about let's, roaches. Yeah, that's a great idea because I think that uh, even a, a a big macho man, if a roach crawls on him, they flip out. I mean, all of a sudden, <laughs> you know. Uh, but there, there, that's another thing. People often get uh, too embarrassed to call, and I know this happens at Sandwich Isle. That sometimes, if if it's a bed bug problem, people. They, they wait and they wait and they wait because they think it's going to go away. You, things like that don't go oh, away. Oh, do bed bugs don't go away. Yeah, yeah. Bed bugs only get worse. And there's very few things that a homeowner can do to get rid of bed yeah. bugs effectively. Bed bugs are difficult. Yeah. And uh, let that be a warning. Those of you who go out, Marisol uh, Quintanilla, our entomologist, warned us a couple of programs ago. If you go garage sailing and you're going to buy furniture or bedding or whatever, you better know what you're doing. You better have a pretty good idea of what you're going to do with that. But yeah, bed bugs are serious business. Yeah, They're hard yeah. to get rid of. Um, what's the best thing for do? If people want to, if people are interested in following up or have a child or, or a somebody in school that is going to be looking for a career, what's the best way to find out what might be available at Sandwich Isle? Go online and the Go Sandwich Isle. website and look. Yeah. Call our number. Um, 456-7716. I know the number. Yeah. Talk to Eileen. Eileen is the HR specialist. Okay. We are currently hiring. Yeah. We need people in in, in different do, doing different capacities I mean um, customer service representatives um, technicians in, in other words the opportunities are many and all you've mm-hmm. got to do is 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 go online and check it out for yourself it's pretty easy uh, it's sandwich Isle uh, but sandwich Isle.com www.sandwichisle.com. And we're, we, you planted the seed. Dr. Uh, Quintanilla and I will be back next week, and we're going to talk about other things about, <clears throat> excuse the expression, roaches. I hope you've enjoyed the program. If you want to know more, you go to sandwichisle.com. And, and you should also, like Marisol says, you can call them up at 456-7716. That's 456-7716. Remember, Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. Solutions for all.
Thanks for listening to Healthy Veins, Healthy Legs. For more valuable information, visit us online at w. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. And if something is bugging you, jump online and get debugged at sandwichisle.com. That's sandwichisle.com. Get out, get out.